Hi, Future Tom here. Just want to quickly say that I'm going to be at Comic Con Baltics, MCM Comic Con London, Buffer Fest Toronto, and Wales Comic Con at these dates. So if you want to come say hi at any point in this year and you're near any of those, that's the place to do it. The link's in the thing. Yeah. Back to the vlog. A gargoyle. So shortly after last month, I believe, we said goodbye to Charlie's family dog, Zack the Doggo. We were all there for it, it was not a lovely day, but a year or so later, Charlie's mum found herself missing having a family dog. But it was the pandemic, it was, you know, I think between the first two lockdowns, so Charlie and I went to find her a new dog. And we found, I think on Facebook, a litter of puppies that were pug staffy mixes because charlie's mum loves squidge she wanted her own squidge and squidge is a pug mix is obviously a full blood pug is a lot more work and so we found brindle a pug staffy mix and we thought yeah that'll be that'll be fun he's got the brain of a pug and the body of an incredibly powerful staffy so it's basically like having a Dodgeball with a face. I don't know how to describe it. He's a character. He's very big and very strong and very fast and very hyperactive This is the most still he's, he's he'll ever be and that's because he's planning to run somewhere aren't you Brindle? Well, you've made a fool of me now Ugly boogly. So I get recognized in public semi-regularly probably every other time I go out You know normally it's just a, a nod or a smile. And this isn't me just being egotistical like you I know when I'm being recognized, you know, it's like a you, uh, you know, that kind of thing. The weirdest times that I get recognized are the ones that happen today where I get clocked by someone who is serving me. And again, it's it's fine, but it can be a bit weird when it's an occasion when they need to take your like phone number and address and just generally any contact details. Because again, it's always fine. I've never had any issues, but it's weird to just walk up to someone who's like, oh, I recognize you. And I'm like, ah, hi, nice to meet you. And then I find myself giving them their, giving them my full phone number address passport information it's it's a weird thing happy birthday jake happy birthday, happy birthday jake show the photo again i fucking love that photo <laughs> can you tell which one's which it's been a rough 13 years uh i won't lie when i was a lot younger i recall asking my parents if they actually felt like adults or if they were just pretending to be adults and they looked very confused and said no we we're adults but the older I get, the more I'm convinced that they fucking lied to me because I'm in my 30s and none of this shit makes any sense. It all feels like make-believe, like I'm playing pretend. There are numbers in my phone and when I'm funny in just the right way, those numbers go up and I get to give those numbers to someone who for some reason lets me keep my house, a thing that they have the authority to do. And someone will make water come out the tap and someone will make that water be hot and I have to pretend that this makes any fucking sense and it's not, it's exhausting how insane this all feels. Sometimes when I'm having a conversation with someone about the state of the world, I'll check in and say, hey, this is all crazy, right? And they will always say, oh yeah, absolutely. And then we go back to pretending that it's not and we go back to entertaining the notion that any of this makes any fucking sense, but it doesn't. And I'm trying to choke down that feeling and just think, hey, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But if I get the number to go up high enough, then maybe I can have some kids and they can have a good life and they will have enough numbers so that the water comes out of their taps hot and they get to live in a house and they get to press the buttons and make bubble tea arrive at their doorstep. But this is all so fucking weird and I'm so tired of pretending it's not. I don't feel like I'm losing my mind. I think I just am realizing how little sense any of this makes. There are numbers on my phone and everything is insane. <laughs> So Steve Harwell, the ex-lead vocalist of Smash Mouth, just died. He was a troubled man who developed a dependency on alcohol that led him to fuck up his life and ultimately it killed him. And it's one of those things that's just really, it really fucking sucks. It's just one of those 
net loss, nobody wins in that situation kind of things. And because I recently did a video on All Star and Smash Mouth, a lot of people have sent me that, and because a lot of people sent me it, I felt like I should acknowledge it in some way, but when I went to Twitter, I saw a tweet that I agreed with that was basically just like, RAP, alcoholism sucks, and I gave that a retweet. And then I saw a reply to that tweet that just really fucking boiled my blood. And it was basically the sentiment that, well, alcohol doesn't excuse him being a piece of shit, which no one had claimed, right? And what that was mainly in reference to was something I acknowledge, I believe, in my video, which is that, like, one of Steve's last shows, he's drunk, he's aggressive, and he appears to throw up a Nazi salute. And to give him the absolute benefit of the doubt, I believe the reason he throws up a Nazi salute, or appears to, is uh, in response to someone wearing a mask, because that's kind of a thing where it's like, oh, mask mandates are like fascism. It's it's wrong and it's stupid, but like, I, my best bet is that's the implication. I don't fucking, I don't know. I don't know. At no point in the tweet this person was replying to, did they say that the alcoholism excused any of his behavior. Just that, you know, it's sad that he's dead and that alcoholism's bad. I can't find a possible interpretation of this reply that isn't, it's good that he's dead, you know? That like, yeah, but he was a, a, a cunt, so he got what he deserved, which is a sentiment I see a lot online of this excessive dehumanization of the bad guys to the point that's like, yeah, they did a racism, they deserve to die. And don't get me wrong, it's a sliding scale. Some people are abhorrent and fuck them. If they die, we. I, you know, I have my limits as well. You know, ah, oh, fuck, I don't know. It's, it's, not, it's not him that I'm interested in defending. It's our capacity for empathy that I feel myself mourning. Because I'm someone who's fallen victim to it before. I've gotten lost in the source, as you will. You know, found myself full of such righteous fury that I'm wishing death upon other people. And it's not good. You don't deserve to die just because you've been a cunt. Within reason. I don't know. R.I.P. Steve Harwell. <sighs> So I'm biting the bullet and I'm going to the doctors about all the different things I've been putting off. So I just had a blood test and that woman was fast. She was, she had vials of my blood in hand before I'd even sat down. I don't know how she did that. One of the things I've gone in for is my foot. Do you remember at Disney um, back in what March? I stepped on a stone and did something and it never got better. So I've, I've officially begun the process now of speaking to doctors about that. They've said it, it will get better, but it's like I've been struggling to walk for five months. Owie don't like it. Would like to be walking again. Was enjoying that. Was walking three miles a day. That was good for me. Want to go back to doing that. But for Hearty, we're having a heat wave in the UK. Fuck off. So instead of playing Starfield, I am doing a little mini pub crawl. This is good for me. In that we're gonna go get like three pints and go home. It's geez, Jesus Lord though, this is insane. Also, everyone hates us. Like, Charlie and I look like this, and everyone else here in this town is very normal, and they fucking hate us. Cool, what a big pint. Oh, wait, shit. <laughs> big jizz. See, I don't actually say big jizz anymore, not in real life. That was the thing that I put into a video, and because it became part of a video, it stopped being a thing that I actually did IRL. Like saying, that's very nice. Like, that's a thing that I used to do, and then because I put it in last week and it, beca it became popular, I could no longer do it anymore, really, because it started to feel completely performative. Which is exactly why I don't stream, like, video games. Because I don't want to take away anything else. I don't want to commercialize any more parts of my personality. Because once it becomes a thing, it's not mine anymore. And I stopped wanting to do it. Charlie's not even my real girlfriend. She's uh, an actress. My real girlfriend is a secret. No, they will think that's true. They will believe it. They will, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> it's currently about to hit about 30 degrees Celsius outside, which puts the studio at somewhere around 35 degrees. For the Americans out there, it's basically pushing 100 degrees in the studio. I, I can't, we can't live like this. We've had to cancel so much, so many shoots. We gotta get the fuck out of the studio. We gotta go work in the house. This is too much. I'm gonna die. Tom. Yeah? The duck. Oh, <laughs> Eddie's shirt is melting off his body <laughs> right now. <laughs> Fuck off. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're leaving. We're leaving. Isn't that crazy though? It's so much worse in here. Would you like the forbidden butt plug? Oh yeah. It's one use only. <laughs>
I, I want to jump on it like everything ever all at once. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hello, Squish. Hey, this thing fucking hurts, actually. I don't like this. <laughs> wow. Ah, Done. forgive a kibbuga. Yes. That's your best word yet. Yeah. So, me and Eddie are working on uh, our new game today. Elliot has also been working on the game, but uh, he's up north because we had to cancel the visit because it's too hot. The thing about this game that we're currently working on though is that we haven't decided what the lower limit of the demographic is going to be, like how young we're going to allow people to play the game and at certain points you can't do certain things, you know, like if, if the game's suitable for eight-year-olds you can't make references to, you know, even remotely mature things. So we've essentially had to make three versions of this game. One that is suitable for 18 plus, one that's suitable for teenagers, and one that's suitable for children. We're probably going to go with the one that's suitable for teens and children, which just won't have anything remotely naughty, naughty in it. Mm. But yeah, it's kind of tripled the workload. Um, <laughs> this is a really efficient system. It's been effectively making three different decks of cards. <laughs> yeah. You think we would have learned any lessons from the last time we made a game, but we, we have not. Eh. This is a family club. Please moderate your language. Well, guess what? Wiener! So Charlie and I have decided to come and check out a football game. Like, proper proper English people. Not allowed to play English. No alcohol allowed beyond this point, so well, that's part of the fun gone, unfortunately. But it's so, so fucking hot. I don't know if we'll be able to get through the whole thing. We're gonna find out though. Last time I was in a football stadium was, well, I go every year to the Assembly of Jehovah's Witnesses, which was held, I think, in Norwich Football Stadium. And sometimes it would be this hot, except we'd be wearing a full suit. So it's been worse. It could be worse. Which team are we supporting? We don't know. The red ones, maybe. <laughs> What's going on? Well, it's, go it's going well. <laughs> it's, it's going really well. How are you feeling? Not so fresh, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> keepy uppy gnome, keepy uppy gnome, uh, keepy uppy gnome. <laughs> yeah. So someone on Twitter brought my attention to a content creator themed romance novel by Kathy Yardley called Love, Comment, Subscribe. And one of the motifs in the book is that she'll show a little snip snippets of, of a comment section and in one of those she's included an Astor movie reference which I think is very fun. I like that a lot so thank you for that. One thing I, wa I, I wonder about this book though is if it's a Fifty Shades of Grey Twilight situation where it was originally like a self-insert kind of fanfic and now uh, it's been you know ported and if so what YouTuber is, is the book about? Is it Markiplier? Who's it about? Be honest with me, who is it? <laughs> Who is it, Kathy? So my parents have booked a little surprise getaway. Uh, we're going to a place called Camber, which is basically just on the heel of England. And we, we're gonna go be by the sea for a little bit. Get some fresh air. Get all that tuberculosis out of my lungs. I don't have that. I don't know why I said that, but I'm bringing a fan. Because I can't sleep with that one. I'm gonna get blown by a fan every night. <laughs> all right. Let's go. A booze. God's sake, she's found the shells. She's found the shells. Look at her go. She's free now. Go and try and eat the antenna again, it was funny. Uh, go and eat the antenna. Get his ass. Hello. I want to believe. Give it to me. Give it to me. No. This is the worst day of my life. One more. Okay, this is the one. This is the big one. No! Yo! She's going... She's going crazy with it. You gotta win something, come on! Stay... Stay... Oh shit, go lads, go! Let's go! Fuck! Is that a pony? I think so, yeah. I don't trust her. Alright, here we go. It, rude, rude. Go and give that monkey your balls. Put your balls in the monkey. Monkey, 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 monkey. No, monkey, take the balls. Yeah. This is kind of unnerving. 
She kind of bad. Let's go. Oh, that was underwhelming. <laughs> oh shit. Huge amoogus. And they say the British have no culture. That's mushy peas right there. Yummers. Let's go. Beep, 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 beep. Give me some. Give me some. Oh my god. Huge news, everyone. I found a fucking bottle cap. Yeah. Squiggy in the sea. What are you going to do? You find something? Uh, it took a really long time, but we found this bit of pipe. I'm rich now. Yeah. Who do you want to thank? I want to thank God who put the pipe there. I want to thank Jesus. Is he up there? <laughs> We're using the smart TV at this place and the visual storytelling here is horrible. They've left themselves logged into Disney Plus and we can see that these are not good people because they watched a few minutes of Home Alone, stopped it and then watched the entirety of Home Alone The Holiday Heist. That is deplorable behavior. Don't get me started on a tale of two kitties. What, what is wrong with them? I'm gonna delete their account. So it's our last end holiday, but I've just received some news that's thrown me off balance a little bit. So, look at some monkeys. There you go, that's fun. Oh my God, they're so chunky. Hey. What? Good is not. Do the roller. Go down your alleyway, go make some more friends. So I'm here to see Auntie Donna live. Weird thing about coming to an Auntie Donna show, a lot of crossover, a lot of people in the queue who know who I am, like 50%, a lot of eyes, it was intense. But I'm here with Blopo. Hi! There's Blopo. You all thought I was a man. How sexist. I'm not even in focus. Uh, none of us are. It's, okay. there's You're that's, all sexist, but lovely to meet you. Yeah, um, unless you didn't think Blopo was a man, uh, in which case you won. Um, Surprise. Yeah, we don't work together anymore. You're too good for me now. I got from Mercy, so I'm not allowed to deal with Rip Rap anymore. I hate it. I hate it when I don't work with people anymore. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm really glad that any more times this month. Ever again. Ah, it's, that's it. No, I won't worry about it. That'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy opposite me on the train just now who was blazed to high heavens. His eyes were as red as they come, and it took everything for me not to go. Everyone knows you're high. We're all talking about it. We're all looking at you and we all know exactly how high you are and then just go back to being completely normal and inconspicuous. I just think that would be fun. So today I'm going wall shopping with my buddy Max and we've come to the rich part, like the rich people part of London and I don't want any of this life. I want a nice cozy home that I can put maybe a child or two in and enough money to provide for them I only need a, a 50 gram watch. Just, I just want to tell the time and look good doing it. Where are people getting all this fucking money from? Oh, Bugatti. Shiny. Too shiny. Okay, that's pretty nice. This is so shiny. My kitties are jiggling, dude, and I know this. Watch, show me the watch, show me the watch. Sheesh. Sheesh. Wait, I need to fuck it. Yeah, sheesh. Sheesh. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let's see if we made a remotely drink. Oh, why did you do Shut that? Shut up, fuck trumpet. I don't know how things work. Well, it'd, oh, love, it'd be lovely if it could focus. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. It's not focusing. Hey, that this margarita sure doesn't look margarita fucking colored. How do you make it green? How do you make it green? All right, let's. That's too much salt. <laughs> Jesus, Max. Okay. Licking the salt on the rim of a margarita cancels out the sharpness of the margarita in the exact same way that air freshener cancels out the smell of poo. It doesn't, and now you just have two horrible things happening at the same time. I don't... I will point out that you just said licking a rim. Mm. That's what the air freshener's for. <laughs> I'm overthinking this. I'm, I'm overthinking this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little paranoid about people extrapolating a drama where there isn't one. But I'm also still like kind of processing. I think I just need to, I just need to start, I just need to start talking. So, change is coming. 
And an era is ending because Elliot, who has been largely my sole videographer and editor, basically the muscle of my whole operation for 10 years, has handed in his resignation. In about three weeks from now, he will no longer work for me or Turbo Punch Limited, and his presence on this channel will near enough come to an end. I think we have a few things in the pipeline yet to be released that he's in, but after that, we don't know. There's nothing salacious about this. There's there's no, no, there's no nothing even exciting really. It's it's quite simply, he's got a better job, a job that uh, that pays better, a job that offers more uh, growth and and career opportunities. And he would have been a fool not to take it. So it's a good thing, and, and I am sincerely happy for him. It's just a lot. It's just going to be so fucking weird doing this without him. Elliot has been an integral part of my team for so long. And it's just, that's gonna be different now. You know, the the enormity of this change has really dawned on me today as we've been basically trying to figure out everything that needs to get done before he leaves. Not just projects that need to get finished, but also information that needs to be shared, logistical things, you know, like uh, what fonts uh, do we use in our videos? You know, like, at, where do I find this? What, 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 you know, there's so much stuff I've, I've, I've been able to take for granted for near enough the past decade because there's, there's, there's been a guy who takes care of that stuff, right? Like, I, I, I think I'm genuinely gonna have to learn to edit again, something that I've, I haven't really had to do much for a, a, a long time now. I'm, I'm gonna need like a tutor or, or to take a class or something. There are other people that, that we, that we will work with and, and stuff. We'll be fine, but it's just, Talking my hands a lot here. It's just going to be a lot. And I'm going to save the mushy stuff for a little bit later because I do have lots of feelings and, and gratitude and, and all this stuff. But like I said, I'm still processing that and I don't want to get all feely on camera just yet. But yeah, change is scary, even when it's good. But please know that mummy and daddy both love you very much. Uh, and now you're just going to get two Christmases. <laughs> oh man. Choo choo, bitch, here comes the future. I feel like I'd suit a really big cowboy hat. Uh oh. Alright. What are we thinking? Could this be like a thing? Or do I just look like Terry Pratchett? No, that's a bad thing. This is a bit too big. I wasn't sure what size I needed, and I got one that was too big, but is this worth pursuing? I don't know. He loves this. This is his favorite song. <laughs> <sighs> oh man. Getting ready for LA to leave is a draining experience. Like, just trying to make sure that everything's ready that all contingencies are planned for. I mean, you know, w while Elliot will be going, and, and this may well be w one of the last videos he edits for us, we're still gonna be doing stuff together. You know, we've, we've, we've got series that are filmed and will hopefully come out, but also we're, we're making the game. You know, we've made a game which will continue to need more stuff done to it, and we've got a new game that we're making and we're probably gonna keep making together. So I spent today writing an agreement because there's one thing I learned from my teens and early 20s, it's that everything should be in writing. So here's an example of a little freelance contract I put together for a friend who wanted to start doing commissions. So the first bit, you know, they specify their name, what they're going to do, and who's going to pay them. There's a process for like feedback, like how many rounds of notes is reasonable, specifies the deadline, specifies like the copyright and licensing afterwards. So like it's clear who owns things and what they can do with it. And then it talks about payment, which is like how much they'll get paid, when they'll get paid, if there's a deposit, where it's getting paid to, etc. And then two signatures. And basically just like once that's signed and exchanged over an email, it's pretty effectively binding and it can be called up whenever you need it to be. I'll put a link to this in the description if, if you want to if you want to use it and and play with it like obviously this isn't you know the most legally binding thing but it's a it's a good starting place don't work with your friends especially unless you put everything in writing if you're going to do something together something creative something that might make money but either way something that's going to take up a lot of your time get what's expected of each other and what you know if there's going to be any money involved how that's going to work get that on paper in writing in an email it can save your friendship
because when I was younger, I was just fucking around with my friends and making whatever and there were no rules and when we all became adults and started making money, things got complicated and the goofing around of a teenager suddenly became the headache of a 20 something. So get agreements down, they're not scary, they're not done between two people that don't trust each other, they are good things that protect everyone involved and they can protect friendships as well. So write things down, especially if your money's involved, please. Are we being real? Oh, being second, real. second take. Die, die. Die! I love the muffin song. Why can't I press the button? Hmm? Why can't I press the button? Sorry, what? Why can't I press the button? Huh? Well, whatever's the button. Oh, I just don't press it. I wasn't going to. Come on. Where is it? I'm trying to get a flying shot for context. Yeah, we'll just add bigger ones in the yeah, edit. Like, just <laughs> massive. <laughs> it's <like> stock footage. <laughs> this is how diverse you are, Tom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exterminator, director, actor, writer. Oh, I thought you were referring to the amount of white people on set. That's why you get paid the medium bucks. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be inducive of productivity. Actually, you know what? I think this is a worse choice. <laughs> yeah. The Yorkshire burrito. Yorkshire pudding burrito. Yeah, look, if, if you just stay perfectly flat yeah. Yeah, and, and barely move, then no one will notice you. Oh, sure. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I've got enough plate. Go for it. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Movie magic! <laughs> That's a poo tube. It's not a constant flow of poo. It's been constant for like the past 15 minutes. There is a water feature just above brown. Maybe it's the water feature. It's brown. That's poo. <laughs> Elsie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks like you're choking her out. <laughs> I've never met a dog that genuinely hates me before. Uh, but the. the it's on site. This is Elsie. It's on site. It, she loathes me from a distance. Elsie, we could be friends. Elsie? It do Elsie. Who's this? Hello! It doesn't have to be like this. We could be chill. Okay. Get a dog, they said. You won't end up absolutely fucking covered in hair, they said. Look at this shit. Look, Squidgy. <laughs> Squidgy. What is your. Squidgy? Excuse me? Look at the camera. Squidgy? What, what have you done to me? What have you done? He feels shame. <laughs> he feels nothing of the sort. <laughs> We're fighting. We're fighting right now. Oh no, he loves you. Look at this. Look at this. Every day, everything I own, all the time, forever. It's like BB pellets. I'll be finding his hair for, long after he's gone. Fucker. So after we filmed the short film Try Hards, we went to the pub and while we were there, Eddie ordered an Asahi beer, except he didn't call it an Asahi, he called it an Ashashi. And he's only recently found out about a year and a half later that Charlie and I have been calling it Ashashi ever since because it's endearing, you know, it's a, it's a verbal typo. Um, you know, my old friend Ed would call St Pancras Station St Pancreas and that's what it's called now. So Eddie was like, why are you only bringing this up now a year and a half later? Because it's like, well, no, I've been doing it the whole time. You just didn't know. I'm sorry. We're not bullying you. It's just that's the new word for it. You've... Too bad. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So the sketch we filmed with Dan went really well. I think I'm, I'm really happy with what we got. Dan gave me the exact performance I wanted and then some, so... Hyped for that. But there's two things I'm just, like, unsure about now. One is, who's going to edit it? Like, Elliot's edited pretty much every single Tom Scar sketch for the past eight years. And I am more particular about that than I am with Tom Scar and Friends. It's, it's, there's such a specific language that I have that I'm like, I'm just very anxious about it. I'm gonna see if I can get him to edit it. He only has about five days of work for me left now. Um, so he might not be able to edit this very video uh, if that's the case. We will find out the fun way. I'm not Elliot. And I say again, British people have no culture. What do you call this? Lovely plate of chips and bad things. You've even got mushy peas over there. Lovely. Pinky. Did Pinky get pink eye? Did Pinky rub her face in fuck shit and literally give herself pink eye? Do you feel silly? Do you feel stupid? You should. 
So we recently got this thing called Tony's Chocoloni here in the UK and Charlie's taken quite a shine to it. However, we've had a lot of these come through our house and I've only just realized that it's not Tony's Chocoloni, it's Tony's Choco Lonely. Who divorced this chocolate? Is this chocolate about to buy a social media platform? What? We have a brand called Choco Lonely? Is everything okay? Ball man. <laughs> it is genuinely mad to me that in the almost 20 years since I did my GCSEs, they're still using this same clip art on every single book. That's crazy. Hello, old friend. My old nemesis. Oh, man, do you remember the old office, the Turbo Punch office, where like all of last week and last month happened? It's gone. They gentrified it. I mean, we were already gentrifying the area a bit, but they went and made it even more gentrified. We loved our grotty little office. Look how they massacred my boy. It's just nostalgia, isn't it, really? But it's gone. The Turbo Punch offices are officially wiped off the face of the earth in so much as they've been given a paint of coat and they don't look like the offices anymore. Honestly, if the offices looked like that when we were in them, I don't think I would have been as nearly as mentally ill as I was. That's a lot of sunlight. It was so dark in there. And so cold. I think I just need to stop dressing for the approval of women and start dressing exclusively for the approval of men. So, uh... What are we saying, boys? Is this anything? It's where he belongs. So we just drove past a van with some windows on it. And what happened, Charlie? Listen, I saw the van and I thought it might have been a horse carrier. So I got really excited. You're so horsies. excited to see the horsies. Um, but actually, it was a van carrying a bunch of prisoners. Prisoner transport van, yes, that's what that was. So I got very excited to see them. Yeah. And I hope that they saw the pink haired lady going, <gasps> When, when it drove past, so. I don't think they did. I don't think they did. Maybe. I think they got bigger problems. Big jizz. <laughs> A big jizz. So last night I went to see Adrian Bliss perform live and that was just really cool. I haven't hung out with Adrian, I think, since way back in like last week, but seeing him up on stage absolutely owning that shit and doing some of the most enjoyable physical comedy I think I've ever seen was just really impressive. My agent is very much pushing me to try and do a live show, so I've been going to some more shows trying to figure out what that might look like, and it is just such a terrifying prospect and something that I don't have the spoons to think about right now, but maybe in the future. Maybe. So, when we rebranded Dark Squidge to Tom Scar and Friends, the plan was, oh, I'm Tom Scar and I make videos with my friends, well, I have a whole channel dedicated to the videos that I make with my friends, and then I ended up just making videos with the same two friends. The, the two friends that I also paid, uh, which was Eddie and Elliot. And now, today, we're filming our first content without Elliot, uh, with Reb Day instead, who, who, who I'm also paying to be here. Look, I'm not a scrub, okay? I got a bad rep when I was like in my early 20s for not paying people enough or on time. Now everyone gets paid. Even to hang out with me. This is doing a lot of damage to my self-esteem. I'm doing it so very gently. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, are we ready everyone? Yes. Yeah. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Let it rip! <laughs> rip! <laughs> <laughs> what is his issue? What? Eddie's one's the best. Here we go! Yeah! The sparks are flying! <laughs> wow. Oh! This is the high octane. Oh! Here we go. Are we gonna do it? Oh! 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 Oh god! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 I bottled it! <laughs> it's so- it's quite warm in here. Why are you wearing a jumper? Why am I wearing an overshirt? You've got the right idea, but if you start sweating, everyone's gonna know. To uh, be fair, I wasn't oh, well. warned. I'm new to this. No, it's true. I could have warned you. We've got the th the thermometer over there. Have we? Yeah, there yeah. he is. Oh. I don't know why I thought pointing at it would help. It's about, what, 24, 25 right now in here? 80... hundred. That's Fahrenheit, babe. It's actually like 26. That's gross, because outside it's only 19. But in here it's seven degrees because that's because it that's heat of the room plus us talking plus big light and just the bands. Uh, 
Oh, so that was September. Uh, somewhat of a surprising and stressful month. That's gonna get more stressful next month. I mean, we're gonna have Elliot come down to do one final day of filming, meaning I have to do the tryhards that's been on hiatus uh, since December of last year, uh, or else that project's just gonna get completely scrapped. And just got gotta set everything up. Yeah, change is coming. And is the change gonna be a good thing? Is it gonna be a bad thing? Or is it just gonna be a thing? We'll find out together, won't we? Oh. Wish me luck, and uh, I'll see you last month. Do I say that? I think I say, I forget every time. Oh God, um, okay, I, I don't know how Elliot took his voice with him, but I'll, I'll do it myself. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money, money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money. This is hard, hey you. Thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money, money. Uh, thank you patrons, we appreciate it. Uh, I guess I guess I have to come up with a new song. Um, so, uh, stand by for that. Please send help. <laughs>